New chapter about multiplying fractions. This is lesson 7.1, find a fractional part of a group. We can find a fractional part of a group by using the denominator to find how many equal groups to make from the whole number. Then we can use the numerator to find how many equal groups to count. We can count the number of items in those groups. Because fractions describe equal parts, it's important that we divide our counters into groups that have the same number. The groups must be equal sized. We have two-fifths of ten. We make five rows and we circle two of the rows. There's ten in all. In five groups, we circle two of the groups. We count the number of counters. In those two groups, there are four altogether. So two-fifths of ten is equal to four. One-sixth of eighteen means there are eighteen in all in six rows, and we circle one row, one of the six rows. One-sixth of eighteen is equal to three counters that are circled. It's also one-sixth times eighteen, and that's equal to three. There are 24 students in Miss Cho's classroom. One-third of her students ride a bus to school. How many of her students ride a bus? So we think we need to find one-third of 24. We'll put 24 counters into three rows. Our denominator is three. We'll put them into three rows. And we draw them in three rows until we know we have 24 in all. We circle one row because the numerator is a one. We count how many are in that one row. We have eight counters that are circled. We know one-third of 24 is equal to eight. Or we can say one-third times 24 is equal to eight. That write a bus. One-third of 24 is equal to 8, or one-third times 24 is equal to 8. And since one-third and two-sixths are equivalent fractions, two-sixths of 24 is also equal to 8. If we have 1 for a numerator and 3 for a denominator, and we multiply both the numerator and denominator times 2, we're going to get two-sixths, an equivalent fraction. And our array has 24 in all, in six rows, we circle two rows, eight counters are circled. Two six of 24 is equal to eight, or two six times 24 is equal to eight. We get the same product, but our array looks different than one third times 24. If we multiply the numerator and denominator times four, we'll get an, the equivalent fraction, 4 twelfths. And 4 twelfths of 24 is also equal to 8. 4 twelfths times 24 is equal to 8. We make 12 rows, we circle 4 of them, and there are 8 counters that are circled in the 4 rows. Since 1 third and 4 twelfths are equivalent, 1 third of 24 is equal to 4 twelfths of 24. One-third of 24 is equal to 8. Two-thirds of 24 is equal to 16. Or two-thirds times 24 is equal to 16. We had three groups. We circled one group. There's eight in that group. We knew that's how many of Ms. Cho's students ride a bus. The, remain, the remaining groups, we have two of them. That would be two-thirds of the 24. That's 16. That's 8 plus 8 is 16. And this is because the 1 third plus 2 thirds is equal to 3 thirds. It's equal to one whole. They are fractional parts that add up to one whole. If 1 third of 24 students ride a bus, then 2 thirds do not ride a bus. 16 do not ride a bus to school. And remember, the denominator tells us how many groups we have in all. If we have three-fourths, we have one, two, three, four rows. That's four groups. And the numerator tells us how many groups to count. That's how many we circled. 
we circled one, two, three of them out of four. There are five, 10, 15 counters in our three circled groups. There's 15 counters in the three groups. Three fourths times 20 is equal to 15. We need to find which multiplication problem matches the model. We have one group circled. We can see that. We can see there are three rows. We can see one of three rows are circled. There are one, two, three, four, five, six times three. There's 18 counters. So it's of 18 and one of three rows are circled. If you said one third of 18, you're right. Now look at this one. It's just one big circle. We have two, four, six, eight in all. That's why it says of eight. We have one, two, three, four rows and three rows are circled. If you said three fourths of eight, you're right. Three of the four rows were circled. Mrs. Kim baked 36 chocolate, 24 vanilla, and 12 lemon cupcakes. She sold five-sixths of the chocolate, two-thirds of the vanilla, and one-half of the lemon. How many cupcakes did she sell? So think, we need to find five-sixths of 36, two-thirds of 24, and one-half of 12. Then we need to add them to get a total sold. For five-sixths of 36, we have a six denominator, we make six rows. We make six groups. We circle five of them, and we count how many counters are in the five groups. There are 30. So five six of 36 is 30. For two thirds of 24, we make three rows. We circle two of them. We have 24 in all. The counters in two of the rows are 16, so two-thirds of 24 is equal to 16. For one-half of 12, we make two rows, the denominators are two, we circle one of them. There are six in that one row, so one-half of 12 is equal to six. We add 30 plus 16 plus six, and we get 52 cupcakes sold. Which of these models represent two-fifths of 15? We need to circle all that apply. Let's look at the first one. We have, there's five, 10, there's 15 counters here. And if we split them into columns, there'll be five columns and two of them are circled. This would be two of the five columns, so yes, this would be two-fifths of 15. What about this one? We have five rows. Two of the rows were circled. There are 15 in all. Does that represent two-fifths? If you said yes, you're right. It's two of the five rows that represents two-fifths. Here we have five rows with three in each row, so we have 15, and two columns are circled. Is that two of five that are circled? No, this is two columns out of three that are circled. That doesn't represent two-fifths. What about this one? Does this represent two-fifths of 15? How many counters are there in all? We have five, 10, 15 counters. Two are circled of the rows. That does not represent two fifths. This would be two fifths. This represents two of three. This represents two thirds of 15. So this model and this model, they represent two-fifths of 15. Our next lesson, 7.2, we're going to model multiplying fractions and whole numbers. 
I hope you're well. I hope you're safe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.